It wasn't that long ago to when one of the nation's top scorers was considered to have superstar upside and was projected to be one of them ones in the NBA. As from the eye test, it just seemed as though he had hardly any real flaws in his game. But fast forward just five years later to whereas he has struggled to find his fit on the NBA team. Now, despite that, he's never fell short of showing the doubters that he's truly always been made for the big moments. This is the Cam Reddish story. Born on September 1st, 1999 in Norristown, Pennsylvania, Cam Reddish caught recognition relatively early in his basketball journey. And quite frankly, he experienced being one of the top prospects in the whole entire country. During his middle school years, by just the seventh grade, he stood at six foot one and even had an advantage over a lot of kids he played against due to the fact that he could cover positions one through five and could even finish around the basket better than most. And his combination of outside scoring and athleticism uniquely made him capable of scoring the basketball at a very high clip. As a 8th grader, Reddish attended the Haverford Prep School in Philadelphia, and honestly, he really just simplified the game. So much so, to whereas he was playing point guard while starting on varsity during his 8th and 9th grade years. Now, although he was only 6'2 as a freshman, it was kind of obvious that he would be way taller by the time he ended his high school campaign. Based on the simple facts that his mother was 6 foot and his father was a 6 foot 8 forward who played his college ball at V. BCU. As a sophomore, Cam decided to make the transfer into the West Town School in Westchester, Pennsylvania. There, he would team up with class of 2017 five-star recruit, as well as current NBA player Mo Bamba. Cam helped lead his team to a record of 28-5 and and a league and state championship. Now that summer, as he was prepping to play for the men's national under-17 team, during one of the last practices leading up to making the cut, he would tear his groin. Apparently, there was one muscle in there that was hanging, and the doctor said that if the one that was hanging would have tore, his career would have been over. And after realizing that at any given moment, the game could be taken away from him, it drove him even more. And as time went by, he just kept perfecting his work ethic and never took advantage of any of his opportunities. Now, prior to his junior season, he would team up with NBA first round draft pick Lonnie Walker for team final. By the time Reddish's junior season came, while standing at six foot eight, Reddish went on to average 16 points a game. Everything came so easy to him offensively. And while he mostly suited up at the point guard position, he had a special ability to get his shots off whenever he wanted to, no matter what the defense threw at him, as his release was lightning quick and looked just as comfortable pulling up from extremely deep as he did when shooting a closer in jump shot. At this point in time, he was regarded as the best prospect in the country, but didn't stop there as he led his squad to a friend's school league title. That summer, he came into his own even more and averaged an outstanding 24 points, 8 rebounds, and 3 assists. In the Nike EYBL circuit, at around this time, Cam was considered a first round pick type of talent. But not too long after, he represented the United States men's national under 19 basketball team. Cam put up 11 points, 4 rebounds, and 3 assists, and led his team where they would finish third in the FIBA World Cup. In his senior campaign, he averaged 23 points, 6 rebounds, but also ended that year being named 2018 Mr. Pennsylvania Basketball. He was now ranked the third best prospect by ESPN, which allowed him to become a McDonald's All-American, as well as playing in the Jordan Brand Classic game. And after having a plethora of offers to choose from, the five-star recruit made the ultimate decision to sign a letter of intent to play college basketball at Duke University. There, he would join fellow five-star recruits Trey Jones, Zion Williamson, and RJ Barrett. In his season debut on November 6, 2018, Reddish put up 22 points in a win over Kentucky at the Champions Classic. But throughout his freshman season, he had to really adjust into more of a backseat type of role after being ball dominant throughout his high school career. And for the most part, throughout the season, he really didn't get to showcase a lot of things that he had in his arsenal. So while suiting up in 36 contests, he averaged 14 points, 4 rebounds, and 2 assists. Now, he had his highs, like on January 12, 2019, when he scored 23 points on 9 of 15 shooting, including the game winner. There it is. That's a screen. That's Barrett for the ball. 
It's oh, in. Wide open. Got it. Oh, oh. But he did go through his struggles throughout the season as he was quite inconsistent. Although he did show glimpses of how great he could be, he only shot 35% from the field and 33% from behind the three-point line. But he was still projected a lottery pick. So after declaring for the 2019 NBA draft, he would be selected 10th overall by the Atlanta Hawks. But his rookie season really didn't start off well. In November, Reddish was only shooting 32% from the field and 28% from three. But he just managed to keep going and show significant improvement by the end of the season. Where he was averaging 17 points on 54% shooting from the field and 51% shooting from behind the three-point line. But that hot streak would all be cut short due to the pandemic. And throughout his first couple of years in Atlanta, he averaged 11 points, three rebounds and one assist in 118 games while shooting 39% from the floor and 33% from deep. In his second season, yet again, as he was catching momentum towards the end of that year, his season was cut short due to his right Achilles soreness. He did have some moments where he showed signs of having a low motor and disengaged when he really wasn't having his game. But when he showed up, he showed up big. Like when he returned from injury and showed the world what he was made of versus the Milwaukee Bucks in his very first own NBA playoffs. And in game six, he became the second 21-year-old to make six threes in a conference division finals game, joining Kobe Bryant in 2000. Coming into that next season, there was a lot of anticipation on the Hawks being legit contenders, but it really didn't go that way. And on January 13th, 2022, he was traded to New York in exchange for Kevin Knox. And it was clear from day one that he really didn't fit Coach Tibbs' gritty type coaching style. Cam showed promise at first, and after some time, he struggled to find any type of playing time. And once he did get in, he found himself forcing a lot of shots, which was due to the fact that he wasn't getting a lot of touches. And after just a couple months with the team, he missed the rest of the season due to a right shoulder separation, in which he would have to get surgery on. In the next season, he did earn a couple starts, but in December of 2022, Coach Tibbs announced that Cam had fallen out of his nine-man rotation. A couple months later, Cam was traded to the Portland Trailblazers, and for the remainder of the season, Reddish was able to maintain averages of 11 points, 3 rebounds, and 2 assists per contest. But on June 30th, he agreed to a $4.6 million deal to join LeBron in the Lakers. Cam Reddish, throughout his route to the pros, has always had a smooth and composed type playstyle that's paired up well with his sneaky athleticism. And throughout all the downfalls that he's experienced along the way, it's truly never devoured his confidence. Uh, I'm blessed, man. I'm just trying to stay in it. Um, I'm running number zero, right? So I ain't, I ain't nothing without God. I try to go out there and just trust God, trust my game. Um, and I put a lot of work in, so. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Cam Reddish story.